You're watching it right now. It's been the news of the day in the Spanish Congress. Mariano Rajoy was stripped of Spain's presidency today. The socialist leader Pedro Sánchez has ousted him from power with decisive votes from Catalan pro-independence parties. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. A new era lies ahead of Spain. A vote of no confidence to oust Mariano Rajoy has been successful, something that was unthinkable 10 days ago. But after the verdict of a corruption case affecting his party was out last week, the socialist leader Pedro Sánchez made a move. Yesterday, the Catalan pro-independence parties and the Basque nationalists confirmed their yes votes. The result, Rajoy's six and a half years of rule is over. After a 10-hour debate yesterday, today it was only up to the two main Spanish parties to make their stances clear. Sí. After that, the vote took place, with 180 MPs voting yes, 169 no, and one abstention. It was the first time in history that a Spanish president was removed from office this way. But when it was confirmed, the socialists, and also others, burst with joy. Mariano Rajoy, who yesterday spent eight hours in a restaurant to skip the afternoon debate on his future as Spain's leader, accepted the defeat today. His future is now uncertain. Ha sido un honor no lo hay mayor haber sido presidente del gobierno de España. Ha sido un honor dejar una España mejor de la que encontré. 36 out of 47 Catalan MPs in the Spanish Congress voted yes to Sánchez, this way saying no to Rajoy. That is three out of every four lawmakers, socialists, pro-independence and members of left-wing in Comú Podem green-lighted the motion with Ciutadans and the People's Party voting no. Some MPs were more enthusiastic about stripping Rajoy of power than giving it to Sánchez, but Catalan leaders already have high expectations of the new president. En la primera reunió que tinguem plantejarem aquelles qüestions que són imprescindibles. Primer, per rescabalar aquesta vulneració de drets civils que pateixen els presos i els exiliats. I ara estan en mans dels jutges, per tant no estan en mans de Pedro Sánchez que les persones que estan a la presó puguin sortir, però sí que pot fer coses. Només crea ja un clima de distensió, segurament ajuda que el tema judicial vagi d'una altra manera i sí que té un paper molt important el govern en poder apropar els presos a presons catalanes. In Mariano Rajoy's legacy, the Catalan issue will have a very relevant place. Soon after he came to power, the independence movement started to soar, leading to the most intense push for a Catalan state seen in almost a century. What Rajoy did and didn't do in the years ahead of last autumn will be very much discussed from now on. But one thing is clear, one of the top images of his time in office in Catalonia will be that of what happened on the referendum day. Police violence. The referendum on independence. The declaration of independence the imprisonment of Catalan leaders, the exile of President Carles Puigdemont, and the appointment of his successor, Kim Torra. The most crucial chapter of Catalonia's modern history has no shortage of iconic images and figures, yet the most defining role might have been played by a person in Madrid, Mariano Rajoy, the Spanish president until he was voted out of power with the support of Catalan parties. When the independence beat began, Rajoy was already there. In fact, his own party was behind one of the original grievances of independent supporters, challenging Catalonia's project for a new statue of autonomy in court. In 2012, he met with his Catalan counterpart at the time, who wanted a better financial deal. Rajoy said no. President Artur Mas called the snap election and won by championing a new demand, a referendum to decide on independence. As the calls for Catalan independence became louder, Rajoy remained firm in his position. Leaving Spain was not negotiable. Led by Puigdemont, the Catalan government went ahead with a referendum despite Spain's opposition. The police intervention left more than a thousand injured. Rajoy responded to a subsequent declaration of independence by pushing what was deemed the nuclear button. He imposed direct rule, dismissed Puigdemont and his ministers, and called the snap election. Rajoy would take then a backseat role as the courts entered the ring to prosecute Catalan leaders. But the story was not over. The pro-independence parties came out of the election with a majority and will form a new government after months of political deadlock. 
Rajoy may be gone, but the conflict over Catalan independence is far from over. Pedro Sánchez will take office as Spanish president tomorrow and his cabinet members will be unveiled soon afterwards. The appointment of some ministers from Catalonia is expected. The bets are open on who he will choose. But coinciding with this, the new Catalan ministers will also take office tomorrow. Their oaths will automatically mean the end of direct rule in the country after seven long months. Between this moment, the Declaration of Independence in the Catalan Parliament, and this one, the Spanish Senate voting for unprecedented measures against Catalonia's self-rule, there was only a 45-minute gap. It was back on October the 27th, 2017, one of the days when tensions were at a peak in the country. With the formation of a new Catalan government, those measures passed by the Senate and imposed by Mariano Rajoy's now ousted executive have been lifted. The most iconic was the removal of the whole Puigdemont cabinet on that same day of October the 27th. All Catalan government offices abroad but the one in Brussels were also closed, along with the Catalan Public Diplomacy Council. According to one association of public servants, over 250 officials have been fired since then. One of the last was the Director General of Foreign Affairs for letting a deposed minister set foot in the Brussels office to attend the cultural event. Another controversial result of the application of Article 155 of the Spanish Constitution was the removal of some works of art in the city of Lleida. After a long-lasting conflict between Catalonia and Aragon, when a judge ordered the artworks to be moved from Lleida to Sushena in Aragon last November, the Catalan administration already under Madrid rule had to give up the fight. Other effects of this situation include freezes on funding for some research projects, while policies for the LGBTI and underage sectors have been put on hold. The Catalan government had also started unearthing some mass graves from the Spanish Civil War, but this too has been stopped. The Spanish government pledged that once a new government is formed, Article 155 will be lifted. This has now happened, but somewhat unexpectedly, with a different cabinet in Madrid. The new Catalan ministers are already decided, but as we've already told you, there is expectation for their Spanish counterparts and even some pressing demands. Spain's next Minister of Public Works should be a Catalan. This is what the President of the Chamber of Commerce demanded today, putting the pressure on the new President of the Spanish Government, Pedro Sánchez. At a press conference today, he also called on Sánchez to put a new model of infrastructure investment in motion, that is for public transport, roads, ports and airports. The reason being, Catalonia did not receive all of its proposed budget last year, he complained. In culture news, and a particularly controversial piece of artwork has made it to Barcelona and can now be seen on display at the city's modern art museum. Political Prisoners in Contemporary Spain by Santiago Sierra. It was pulled from Madrid's Contemporary Art Festival last year and vetoed at another exhibition by the European Parliament this week. The piece has not been short of its share of controversy, but after its successful run in Lleida, it's made its way to the capital. It features the pixelated images of some individuals branded as political prisoners, including the jailed Catalan deposed ministers. And its unveiling coincided with the CCCB's Orwell Day, opening seven days of exhibits related to language, truth and politics. Some of the key themes of Orwell Day are freedom of speech and censorship. There's always an excuse for a party in Catalonia, but some celebrations in the country date back centuries and still manage to maintain their roots. Such is the case for La Patum, which hails all the way back to medieval times. And this year's edition is already in full swing. So what can be expected for the uninitiated? For foreigners, La Patum is not your typical festival. But as far as festivities go, it doesn't get much more Catalan than this. For a few days, the town of Berga in northern Catalonia is transformed by fire, loads of it, giants dancing and traditional music. Not much has changed in hundreds of years. This year, however, saw some timely twists to the old school party. The town launched a campaign against sexist violence using La Patum as its springboard by setting up an information and support office for possible victims. Throughout La Patum, it aims to educate people on a number of topics. ¿Qué son la agresión sexual, sexuales, sexistas? ¿Qué significa esto? ¿Y qué significa poder generar una cultura no sexista de diversión en un espacio nocturno? 
On its first day, the office attended to 171 people, but sexist violence is not the only thing on the agenda. La Patum kicked off the party with a call for the freedom of Catalan leaders in jail or abroad. The town square filled with banners and all things yellow, the color of solidarity with pro-independence leaders investigated by the Spanish judiciary. But politics aside, at the end of the day, La Patum is another good reason to party like they did in 1499. Its origins are even recognized by UNESCO as an oral and intangible world heritage that dates back to theatrical performances of medieval times. At noon, the festival tends to be more solemn and reserved, more in tune with its religious roots in the celebration of Corpus Christi. But at night, the town turns wild with everybody getting involved. And La Patum is not over yet, there's still the big climax to come on Sunday. Fire Devils will fill Burgas main square, turning it into a depiction of hell without the brimstone. Don't worry though, these devils don't bite, they're just part of the celebrations. With the weekend ahead, there are many activities and festivals in Catalonia for people to take part in. But above all, we've got the Patum, as you've already seen, and the Primavera sound. Yesterday night, thousands could enjoy the music of top international artists and bands such as Sparks, all the way from the USA. Enjoy the weekend and see you on Monday for more Catalan news. If you